This is Hacko's tomb, otherwise known as Margaret's Law or the Haley Chambered Cairn, lying just outside the Douglas Park in Largs. The name given to it relates to King Hakon of Norway. It's one of a number of uh, erroneous beliefs regarding the Battle of Largs. He didn't die here. Um, he was buried elsewhere, having died once he'd left these shores. Now, the battle took place in 1263, but really it was more of a skirmish. Essentially, King Hakon's fleet was moored off Cumbri. A storm caused a number of ships to be grounded on the shore at Largs, and the sailors came ashore together with perhaps up to a thousand um, Norwegian troops to basically refloat the boats. Now the Scots started to harass them uh, with slingshots and with uh, bows and arrows and there were also possibly up to 500 uh, of the Scottish horse soldiers as well as maybe the same number of troops on foot. There are some local legends that Camp Hill Reservoir relates to the camp of those soldiers the night before. And there's also a, a memory of Kilburnie Place having been a muster point. So all the foot soldiers probably came from Cunningham and Kyle and maybe other close by areas. Whilst Alexander III was the king at the time, his father had almost conquered the Outer Isles. He had tried to also buy them back from the King of Norway. How he did not succeed in that. Alexander III, when he came to the throne, he was very young, a number of years took place, took, went past before he was able to start up his negotiations again. King Hakon came across from Norway with a very large fleet indeed and harassed all sorts of areas, even going up as far as Loch Lomond, pillaging. It is said that Alexander III tried the tactic of keeping King Hakon here as long as possible in the hope that the winter storms would end up in him being forced to go back to Norway. Now upon the troops and these ships having grounded, they split into two groups, the Norwegian. Some went on to what is now known as the Three Sisters Mound and others were on down on the shore side. But this of course meant that both of the groups were split, which would make it much easier for the Scots to defeat them. So the ones on the mound ran down to join their colleagues, but this gave the impression that they were panicking and the Scots thought they were winning. Following that, a number of skirmishes took place around the boats, a number were killed on both sides, and eventually the, the Norwegians were able to force the Scots off the Three Sisters Mound. They all then retired for the night. The Norwegians went back to their boats. And the next morning they got permission from Alexander III to come and collect their dead. They then left, went back to Norway, and within a few years, Cumbri, Arran, the Isle of Man, the Western Isles, the Outer Hebrides, all these became part of the Kingdom of Scotland. Incidentally, the leader of the troops, the general, was, was Alexander of Dundonald, the High Steward of Scotland. Now, later his family, as the High Stewards, became the Stuarts. So their line became the Kings of Scotland. The Pencil Monument is located on the site of a number of other ancient tombs which were also thought to relate to the Norwegians, but that is not the case. There is a standing stone as well on Great Cumbri that is said to be the burial place of one of the Norwegian troops. Incidentally, even in recent times, um, there was the belief that the pencil was actually a Norwegian structure and was used to store their weapons. This shows how legends are created.